Hi, my name is Sean Krogan. I'm a network engineer and installation professional. I've been doing that for the last 20 years. I've teamed up with Ubiquiti to do a docu-series on cable installations in your residence, in your small to medium-sized business. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. There's a number of different categories that you've heard of for cables. There's Cat5, Cat6, Cat7, and 8. A Cat5 cable can go up to one gigabit and you can't exceed 100 meters for that length. That length is from your device through to the other end of that cable to the switch. Cat6 cable actually lets you get up to, if your hardware supports it, up to 10 gigabit. Now Cat6 by itself, you can go up to a length of 55 meters to get 10 gig, or you can go a full 100 meters, but only get one gig speeds. And then there's Cat6A. Cat6A lets you take and do a full 100 meters at 10 gig speeds. Then there's Category 7 cables. Category 7, again, same length, 10 gig in length, but it comes in, it's a shielded cable. And then emerging, there's Category 8, and as time marches on, cable technology is going to get and we'll be able to go faster and faster speeds with that. So when you're looking at your category cables or Cat6 cables, you're going to see there's a number of markings on here and there's a couple of things that would be uh, point out for you that you kind of want to keep in mind. This might be if you're going into an existing building uh, or your house and you're not quite sure what cable you have, there's a couple of things to look out for. It'll tell you typically who the manufacturer is, it'll tell you the type of category that the cable is, That'll be also with the CMP or CMR. That's gonna let you know if it's plenum or riser cable. And then the last thing, which is great for cable, especially coming out of the box in that, if you're doing an install or you're not sure how long your length is, is most cable comes with a foot or a meter mark on it. And you'll usually find this printed about every two feet along a cable. So for this section, we're gonna talk about ethernet cables, uh, specifically what everybody's been using, which is UTP, Unshielded Twisted Pair. Uh, I have a short little segment of this. This is one of Ubiquiti's uh, cables that I've kind of cut and pulled apart. There's the four pairs that you can see here, and they're color-coded. There's the dialect that's here, and then this is just a little piece of dental floss, and that's used for stripping. So there's also a couple of different types of cable. There's what's called uh, solid core cable, which is this type right here, and you can see it's just an individual solid core piece of wire. And we also have stranded wires, and that's where each individual wire has uh, is stranded. There's seven super small little wires in here. And why would there be a difference to that? So solid core wire is a lot stiffer and it's used more in structured uh, installations or permanent installations. A little bit harder to bend, but it's a little bit better for the interior installations especially for crimping ends uh, and putting on your, your inserts. Uh, stranded bends a lot easier, it's a lot smoother, can coil up, but can be a little bit more damaged when you're pulling inside of walls or in a little more difficult in, in crimping. So there's also two different types of cable that you would use during your installations. There's CMR and CMP. R stands for riser. And that's gonna be a cable that you're gonna use in your, in your house and in some buildings that it's allowed and it's going to be able to go in your walls, through your ceiling, through your attic space. The other type is CMP or plenum. The jacket that is used on it has been specifically built and tested to not release a number of toxic fumes in cases of a fire. Many times within a building, if there's fire and the, and the cable starts to catch fire, this is not going to release many of the toxins that you're gonna find in a PVC rated coating of a CMR cable. It's a little bit more expensive, but we make a standard that we just always install plenum rated cable, safest way to go, and you don't have to ask questions for local code. For this section, we're gonna talk about putting an end cap or an RJ45 end onto a cable. There's a number of different styles of strippers that are out there. The biggest thing is, is that this has just got a small little razor blade in it. And I can do a small spin around and I can just cut that cable. So now that we have the cable stripped, we'll kind of explain some of the pieces that are here. So there's eight individual wires in four pairs. This is called a dialect, and if you notice, Kind of a little cross and it's slightly twisted. 
And then this is floss, and it's used to help strip a cable back. You can just take and pull if you need to strip your cable back. And this will be the case if you don't have a cable stripper or you're trying to open it up. I'm gonna remove the dialect and the floss. I'm just gonna cut that right there so it's nice and clean. So now what we're left with is our four pairs. And these are all color coded. There's blue, orange, green, and brown. And individually, they're into these individual sets of twists. And you'll notice that each one has a lighter and a darker. Untwist these wires. If you just kind of slightly pull on the cable, not aggressive. Now that we have the wires separated, we can start to get them in order. Now there are two ways to terminate your wires, sometimes referred to as 568A and 568B. I'm going to terminate this wire in what's called the 568B standard, which is the most common. Here we have the wires laid out in the order that we need for 568B for the RJ45 end cap that we're gonna install. Your order is gonna be white orange, orange, then white green, blue, white blue, green, white brown, and then brown. And they're laid out just in that manner here. And we're gonna use our end cap. This is an RJ45 end cap. If you're using solid core, make sure that you use a solid core end cap. If you're using stranded cable, make sure that you use a stranded cable. And the key is that you wanna have the end cap to be able to go all the way down to where you can get a good connection in the sheath. That way it's protected and not gonna be damaged. This is roughly half an inch. I just wanna keep a nice straight cut across there. You can see how long that is. Those are gonna slide in. You can give it a good push. I like to use a ratcheting crimp tool. But we're gonna do a little crimp. And when you're doing the cable, you wanna make sure that it's in nice and secure. When it crimps in, it'll catch that sheath. And you wanna be able to make sure that you can see all of the wires that are going through there. And that's how you terminate a solid core cable with an RJ45 cap.